Hello! This video is on Francis Bacon. He was born three years before Shakespeare in 1561. And he died 10 years after Shakespeare, 1626. Francis Bacon's father was a very influential man. So was Bacon. Both of them were Lord Keeper of the Seal, Lord Chancellor, big post in Elizabethan England. Francis Bacon became famous during the time of King James I of England. And Bacon was a very major scientist and philosopher in his own time. Did you know that Bacon was believed to be the real author of Shakespeare's plays? This is called Baconian heresy. We don't believe that, do we? He was a lawyer. He was a big courtier. He was a very ambitious man. <laughs> Alexander Pope called him the wisest, brightest, meanest of mankind. You know why? Why? Because Bacon was the protege of the Earl of Essex. Later, when Queen Elizabeth became angry with the Earl of Essex, Bacon was in charge of trying the Earl of Essex and he sentenced his patron to death. That is Bacon. But he was a very great intellectual. He supported the scientific revolution of the 17th century. Bacon revised the Aristotelian method and developed what is called the Baconian method. Bacon wrote both in Latin and English and he had a very great idea to develop the sciences in such a way that it will make man once again the center of the universe. It will give man a lot of power. This idea is called the great inspiration or inspiratio magna. This idea of inspiratio magna Bacon developed in Novum Organum and the advancement of learning. Two important works of philosophy. Now you are thinking, oh, was he really a philosopher? But we know him as an essayist. But really guys, people in other disciplines other than English literature, remember Bacon and study Bacon, not in terms of his essays, but in terms of his other works. They are very important. When I was doing PhD in Canada, I met a student of uh, undergraduate studies doing history studies. And she studied philosopher Bacon, not the essayist Bacon. That was when I really understood, oh, Bacon was so versatile. To reduce him to just being an essayist is wrong. Bacon's essays were also part of his philosophical project, actually. Bacon's essays were based on practical, everyday philosophy. Essays, councils, civil and moral. That is what he has talked about, his title of his essays. At first he made 10 essays. He published 10 essays. Then he published 38 essays and finally 58 essays. Altogether, 58 essays of Bacon were published in his lifetime. Did you get that? Now, all of you would know his off studies, very famous of studies, of truth, of parents and children, of friendship, of gardens, of marriage and single life. You know, so many everyday things that we would do, Bacon wrote about in his essays to teach us. Dear readers, you should do like this, you should do like this. These are, you know, pieces of advice that, we gave, that he gave for everyday life. And what are the features of his essays? We all know that Bacon wrote very small essays, brief essays, showing practical approach to life. 
I should tell you, some of his essays are touched by Machiavellianism. You know, how you appear is more important than what you really are. That idea is there in many of his essays. And they are very aphoristic. Not only are the essays brief, every sentence is like an epigrammatic, aphoristic statement. Every sentence is like a proverb. And these essays are very learned. Classical allusions are there, references to mythology, quotations from great writers are there. It shows Bacon's scholarship. And Bacon wrote another important text, The New Atlantis. It is not a book of essays, it's a book that shows an utopian fiction based on Plato's lost Atlantis. Have you heard of Plato's lost Atlantis? A lost island? And Bacon envisaged an ideal place where there would be an ideal college called Salomon's house. Bacon talked about an ideal college called Salomon's house. And he hoped that King James would establish this college in England. But only in the restoration period was such a college established. Bacon was greatly interested in scientific experiments. You won't believe it. He was on the point of inventing the refrigerator. I'm joking. He was experimenting with the use of snow in the preservation of meat. That is what he was doing when he caught pneumonia and died. In cold countries, when you experiment with snow, you have to take the right precautions. So Bacon died in the year 1626. And uh, Bacon in his works showed the true spirit of the Renaissance. Pursuit of knowledge, living a properly ordered life like a gentleman, as you see in his essays, studying, researching on science, rationalism. Rationalism is a very important aspect of the 17th century, Jacobian period. And Bacon was a visionary. He understood that science has a lot of advantages to mankind. At that, at that time, science was considered like black magic. The scientific revolution that Bacon spearheaded later led to big developments, the development of a middle class society and new classicism. Bacon's classicism and scientific experimentation was greatly influential in the coming years and in the next century. So, I hope you liked this discussion on Francis Bacon. Like always, I'm sure you have been doing this before. Please follow the questions that I'm asking you in YouTube Shorts. Follow our 10 p.m. live for more in-depth discussions of questions. And follow me on Instagram for the little brief discussions of poems, very important poems. I'm discussing briefly in Instagram, I'm sure you know that. All this together will be like a feast. In this year, I want to give you a feast of English literature. Everything together in very easy, palatable ways, practical ways, so that you can pursue your own research and studies and lay the foundations of an awesome career. Until the next video, bye-bye. Happy studying.